Hello there, my fourth grade friends. It's Mrs. Smith here. Today we are doing unit two, lesson number nine, and it's on page 63, which is <laughs> so funny. It's a multiple of nine, right? It's nine times what is 63? Nine times seven. That's right. Okay. Anyways, let's get down to business. In today's lesson, we're talking about um, different multiplication methods, similarities, and differences, and then we're going to talk about this show new groups method. Um, and then we'll do a little bit of practicing here. So, here we go. Uh, method A. In all of these, we're doing 9 times 28. In method A, we've expanded the 28 to 20 plus 8 here. And then we do the 9 times 20, 180, 9 times 8, 72. Add them up and get 252, right? In method B, same thing. We have our expanded form and then here rather than writing out this step that portion seems to have just been done you know in our heads so like nine times twenty nine times eight written there and then added method c we have our nine times twenty right there 180 our nine times eight right there 72 it's a lot narrower, isn't it? Because we didn't um, write out this whole side chunk. This part was just brought over that way. So it's all kind of in one neater, more compact thing, which could be useful, right? And then here we have the nine times 20 is underneath and the nine times eight is on top. So they started with the ones place and then with the tens place. This is probably what your parents are most familiar doing or older siblings if they haven't done the like common core math. So um, this is probably the approach that they take. And this may have been the only way to do it that they've learned. They didn't learn the whole rectangle area model. I know I didn't learn that when I was in school. So you just had to remember nine times eight, 72, and then nine times, we would do nine times two and put that there and then there's this like magic zero that's how they would describe it and then we'd add it up and get the same answer still mathematically correct the nine or the 252 so i want you to take a moment and think about how are all of these methods are similar come up with two things and write them down and then hit pause now and hit play when you're ready okay so i'm gonna go ahead and share what i think um, in all of these methods, things that are in common are we find the partial products before we add them, and we make sure that we multiply our 9 by both pieces to get those partial products. So not just the 8 or not just the 20, but we multiply to every part of the place value to find that partial product. So I'll write that down. If you wrote something similar, you could just leave it, but if you weren't sure, you should write down what I'm writing down now. Um, let's see, so, uh, all methods show, what do you call it when you pass something out to every, um, everyone in the room, when you're passing out papers to the class, for example, that's distributing, right? So this is showing us the distributive property. We're not just doing it to one piece but to the whole thing. All methods show the distributive property uh, multiplying to each piece. Uh, it, or I should say they also all have us find the partial products first. Okay. And that when we talk about the partial products, those are the 180 and 72 in this case that then we add up to find the complete full product, right? Okay, now how are all these methods different? List three differences, or at least three differences. So I want you to think about what's going on. And you, if you want to, you can use superlatives to describe. So you can say which one is the widest, which one is 
more narrow or the narrowest um if you want to describe it like that okay, hit pause if you want to write hit play when you're ready um is the widest because it uses expanded form I guess it's equally wide to method B. So method A, methods A and B are the widest because, well, this is messy. They use expanded form. Um, method D, I'm noticing that they have the ones partial product first when all the other methods had the tens partial product first. So method D shows the ones partial product first. Um, what else is the difference? I mean, all the answers are the same, right? So they all led to the same answer. What about method um, method A is the only one that wrote out the equations for partial products? Is the only one to write out the equations? or the partial product. Okay. So, you know, that's the most important thing is in math, you're remembering that um, when you have different methods, a lot of it is just about preference, what makes sense to you. And it's good to have a wide, a broad set of tools that you can always, um, draw from when needed with some circumstances, one method might be better than another. All right, so discuss how recording the recording methods show the partial products in different ways. So this is what we've done before. This is the nine times eight, nine times two tens. This, I'll be honest, when I first saw this, I was like, what is going on over here? But do you remember when we learned about, if you're adding say like 14 plus eight, maybe like 98 and we would say uh, 4 plus 8 is what well right you would put the 2 in the ones place and then you would put that little 10 like right here so it's like so you just don't forget about it basically that's the same thing right here so what they did here was they did 9 times 8 and they put the 2 in the ones place and then they put the Seven in the tens place so it could easily be added then they did the um, 2 times 9 and they put the 8 in the tens place because it's two tens right so 8 there and then they put the 1 in the hundreds place right there and then they added it up and they got the same answer but when I first saw that I was like what are they doing but if you like this go ahead and use it you know that's what it's all about so let's go ahead and talk about that method a little bit more. Um, the steps for the shortcut method are shown below. So what I'm more comfortable using is putting the number up top. That's the way I learned it originally. Um, but you could also put that number down here just to keep track, right, of what you have done so far. So nine times eight is 72. Put your seven there and your two there. And then nine times two. And here they're mentally adding that um, 180 with that seven in the tens place already. And they're getting 252. Here it's the same thing except they're putting the seven down here. That's the only difference. So what are the or where are the products 180 and 72 in methods A through D? 
So in A through D, we wrote them all below, right? Um, and then added them. In E and F, we made them tiny little numbers. Uh, so, um, they are all written below. Now, we're going to practice what we've learned, and uh, if you would like, if you feel more comfortable using your whiteboard to draw out give that marker, to draw out your area model, by all means, please do that. So I'll do that for a couple of them, but then I'll start using some of the other methods. So 63 times 5. So we'll have our area model. I break my... my Double digit up into tens and ones, so 60 plus 3 times 5. Okay, 6 times 5 is 30, so 60 times 5 is 30 tens, so 300. And then 5 times 3, 15. Add them up, 315. Um, 39 times 8. 30 plus 9 is 39, and 8 goes over here. 3 times 8 is 24, so 3 tens times, three tens times 8 is 24 tenths, 240. And 8 times 9 is 72. Add those up, 240 plus 72, 2... 11, 3, so 312. Now I'm going to do some of these um, with writing the partial products underneath. Oh, this is the one. No, it's not the same one. It's really similar, though. Okay. Uh, 2 times 8. What's that? 16. 2 times 9 tens. What's 2 times 9? 18. 9 tens is 180. Then line it all up. 196. Add. Okay. 4 times 6. 24. 4 times 8 tens. Well, 4 times 8 is 32. 4 times 8 tens is 32 tens. All right, moving along. Seven times five is 35. Seven times two tens, or 20. Well, two times seven is 14, so 14 tens. Add it all up. There you go, 175. If you're feeling good, try these last three on your own and then just correct along with me. Four hundred twenty-three on that one. Eighteen is six times three, and then three times seventy is two hundred ten. Okay. Six times four, twenty-four. Six times fifty, three hundred. Four, two, three. Three hundred twenty-four. All right, so um, hopefully you're starting to feel good about this double digit multiplication that we're doing now. Very nice job, everybody. Uh, go ahead and check and see if you have an assignment. Make sure you're also taking some time to practice your math fact fluency, and I'll catch you next time, all right? Bye-bye, everybody.